The call came early in the morning. The dispatcher said that the patient had been riding in the back of a pickup truck in a rural area when it rolled over in a ditch, critically injuring her. I obtained a standard briefing from flight service. The weather at the destination airport was well below landing minimums. I told the dispatcher we wouldn't be able to go. Ten minutes later, the dispatcher said the doctor from the receiving hospital wanted to talk to me. I didn't want to talk to the doctor, but it was a new flight department and we were just trying to make it work. He was very concerned about the situation said the injured girl would surely die if we didn't get there. I listened carefully and told him there was dense fog and ice. I had no idea when it would improve. The doctor wanted me to at least launch the aircraft and hoped that the weather would improve enough to land before arrival. I decided to take off, listening to my heart instead of my head. I continued getting weather advisories along the way. The weather was getting a little better, but we were still well below landing minimums. The entire way, all I could think about was the girl, how her parents felt, what would happen if we couldn't complete the transport. My own daughter was 13 at the time. I began the transition for the non-precision approach, which was the only one available. As I leveled off at minimum altitude, I was still IMC. I could see the ground, but had no forward visibility. I'd been to this airport before. I could see the river and power plant below, so I knew we were very close and on course. Then, against my better judgment, I began a slow descent, hoping to put myself in a position to land. I waited. To my relief, I saw the approach lights and made a steep turn to the left to align the aircraft for landing. I landed the aircraft safely, but my legs were shaking as I taxied to where the ambulance was waiting. The weather continued to improve, and we departed with the patient. Later, the medical team congratulated me on being able to complete the flight in such foggy conditions. I don't know they ever realized how close to the ground we were. I never talked to them about it. I was angry about what had happened, but didn't know where to direct it. The dispatcher, the doctor, the company, the situation. In the final analysis, I knew it was my responsibility, and I was trusted to make the correct decision. I told dispatch then that this would never happen again. I wrote a policy about it the very next day. 